G'day, it's Graham Catt here, the Chief Executive Officer of the Australian Veterinary Association. I'm here in Sydney, Australia, and congratulations because you are watching Six Degrees of Association with Sarah, Rob and Andrew. Hello and welcome to another episode of Six Degrees of Association, the first web TV show that's dedicated to the pursuit of association success. My name is Sarah Gonzalez from Redback Conferencing and as usual I have my trusty panellists with me. So Rob Barnes from Aptify and Andrew McCallum from Fitness Australia. How are we gentlemen? Pretty good thank you and good to see you and good to see you Rob. Excited yeah. to be back. Excited to be back. Well we got through the barricades downstairs that they were trying to keep us out but yes. we're back. Yeah. Couldn't silence us could they? Could not. And they didn't really try that hard which is no. good I think. No I'm they did not. It as a compliment. No absolutely. So. Well, let's get straight into it. Um, thumbs up, thumbs down, as we all know, is a section of our TV show where we actually spotlight associations that have maybe done something really, really good and something not so good. So I'm going to hand over to Rob first of all. So your thumbs up for today, enlighten us. Thanks very much. So uh, a few weeks back we read uh, online, thanks to our good friends at Marlab Media actually, who do some great uh, podcasts and, and video casts, and uh, they were highlighting opt Optometry Australia. So. Their CEO, Genevieve Quilty, who's been on board since 2012, uh, undertook this massive transformation. And so I really want to give thumbs up both to the CEO, the board, that organisation for taking on what is a really large task, which is rebranding the organisation. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that um, uh, later in the show. But uh, to anyone that's got the courage to take on uh, you know, that kind of transformation organisationally gets a big thumbs up from me. So thumbs down, though. Mm. Um, one of the challenges, I think, to associations in the 21st century is private companies who essentially set up membership-style organisations um, to generate revenue and are uh, confusing the public around what is truly a credential. So they're essentially trying to use this pay us for an ongoing recurring revenue kind of contract or fee or whatever it might be and confusing that with actual professional credentials. And I think that's a huge challenge and can confuse the public about what is really a professional person who has the appropriate qualifications and these sorts of things um, versus just being a membership organization, which is a bit like a loyalty program. So, um, you know, I want to give a thumbs down to organizations, private companies, people calling themselves entrepreneurs who are really making it difficult for, for the public to discern what is a, a professional in a particular field. Not really, but transparent is it? No it's, it's not, it's a, it's a real challenge to the yeah. way and I just don't, I don't think it's terribly Australian to be honest. Yeah, it's just <laughs> so not the it's Aussie It's un-Australian Rob, or you'd even go so far as I, I, I would, I would. I think in a, in a country with a small population like mm. this we need to do better. Mm. Yeah. I'll tell you what is Australian, these coffee cups. Oh, how good, how good are they? Yeah. I'm just going to have a sip of this yeah, really cheers, cold cheers, coffee. Cheers, 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 you too bad. Mm. Yeah, love it. Yeah, you know you've made it when so you've got refreshing. your own coffee mug. So <laughs> who knows what it'll be next time? Yes, um, Andrew. Glasses. Okay, let's not get too excited. Um, Andrew, thumbs up. Yeah, thank you. Thumbs up to I've got to go really big. The American Heart Association. Uh, what a fantastic initiative they've done installing CPR training machines at major airports around the United States. So people, you know, for five minutes you can learn how to do hands off. Uh, hands only, I should say, CPR training. And what a fantastic way to build your brand, build awareness of the important work that the American Heart Association is doing by actually giving that training, free training. You know mm. what? I've got five minutes to my flight, I can duck into the booth and learn how to do chest compressions properly. Wasn't there something like that recently um, in Australia a few months back? Um, and they had it, I forget which oval it was, and it was come down, learn how to do free CPR. We'll have to research that. Yeah, it was Good on the one. news and it was like one day we could go down and they, they were trying to break the record or something. And I think it was the Australian Heart Foundation or something like that. Mm -hmm. Just trying to encourage people to get on board. And I think that's a great campaign and just really shows how you can generate so much exposure just to everyone as opposed to just yeah. your members. Yeah, exactly. And it's growing the brand. So a big thumbs up to the American Heart mm -hmm. Association for that great initiative. And look up the, uh, the initiative you mentioned as well. Uh, thumbs down, I've got to go um, Virgin Australia Velocity Reward Program. Um, Virgin Australia recently announced that it's about to get a bit harder, a bit more expensive to utilise re their Velocity Reward points to claim flights, to claim whatever it may be. So, you know, I mean, this, 
reading the press release, you know, they highlight that their main competitor, Qantas in this case, is still that little bit more expensive as far as points go. So a Sydney to Melbourne flight, it might be 7,800 points on a velocity, using velocity points, up from 7,000. But hey, it's okay because Qantas is still 8,000. And you know, Velocity are going to say, well, you're going to lose your points now with no activity after two years. But hey, it's okay because Qantas is still three years. And reading between the lines, it's hard to see that this is anything but an attempt to make your, to make yourself look that 10% better than your main competitor. And I think, you know, look, Virgin Australia has sold a large portion of their Velocity reward scheme a few years ago, but really, I think they need to go back and let's just remember exactly what made that airline popular in Australia, what made them successful, and it's delivering value to your customers. Being an organisation that delivered value, that wasn't really that concerned with what the opposition was doing, because we're going to do it differently. And I think unfortunately with this change to their, latest change to their uh, reward program, it's simply a matter of moving so far away from that initial, uh, what made them successful, that it's very disappointing. So a thumbs down to the Virgin Australia Rewards Program. You'll still find me in row four though, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that just gets under my skin though. Brands that go out there and they implement something that's going to affect their members, but then they try and cover it and put on a smoke screen by you know, trying to be better than their competitors. It's just so dodgy, once again, un-Australian. Well, it's a, it's a challenge, it's yeah. a challenge. And uh, it, I don't know, maybe not as Branson-esque as, uh, as Richard would like. No, yeah. no. And we look forward to getting his feedback. I'm sure you're watching, yeah. Richard. Thank you. Hi, Richard. Um, <laughs> and perhaps there's a, we could get that hashtag trending, hashtag un-Australian. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that, nice. that would be nice. Um, so speaking of branding, uh, we're now going into the lunchtime special. So this is a part of our show where we actually highlight certain topics that we think are quite interesting within the sector and deserve a little bit of debate. Um, so today we're actually going to talk about branding and the role of brand management in the association sector. So how much do members actually care about the brand of the association that they belong to? Um, and on the back of Rob's thumbs up for Optometry Australia, let's explore the role of branding in the pursuit of association success. Thanks, Sarah. I, I think it's, an, an, a, it's a great discussion to have because branding is a really challenging piece for associations. On the one hand, it has the opportunity to create the most value um, for the membership. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, it's also a really expensive exercise. When you think about corporates, you know, fast-moving consumer good companies and these sorts of things, that are, they, I mean, they're spending millions of dollars repositioning the brand, mm. creating new logos, putting some purpose behind. Um, associations don't have those kind of resources. So there's mm. innovative ways, I think, that associations start to bring rebranding to the table that is far more effective because they're trying to do it on a shoestring budget and the like. However, um, the purpose behind it has to be really, really clear. And so that's why I really like what uh, Optometry Australia did and Genevieve Quilty was very clear that um, they're talking about a monumental shift in strategic focus mm. and that shift was from an inward facing member centric trying to market the association's value to the membership to a let's promote the value of the profession to the public mm. and that's an enormous shift to make no doubt it takes a little bit of courage as I, as I thumbs up before um, can be an expensive exercise as well. I mean, that's part of the challenge, right? Yeah, but you make a great point. I mean, it is, you know, are you promoting the profession or are you seeking to promote the association? Now, people join associations. Why do I join? Well, I'll, if, if I get recognition, fantastic. That's mm -hmm. what I'm looking for from joining, among other things, of course. So being that association and finding that way to do that, to deliver that value around that brand recognition, I mean, it's a tough sell. It's a tough sell. It's a tough thing to find the dollars to do it and to find the way to do it efficiently because associations don't have the untold wealth that uh, you know, a lot of private organisations with powerful brands have. The trick is to be clear. The trick is to absolutely be clear why it is that you are looking to change the face or the mm. reputation of, of your association in the first place. And so you know, I harp on about purpose being you know, as, as important as anything yeah. else. And in, in the case of a professional association, the value for membership, the value for professionals in that industry is if the public recognises what it means to be a registered optometrist, a regis registered exercise professional. It's not 
the value between the association and the professional. The, the real value in my, in my view is when the public can recognize and go, well, I'm going to choose that optometrist, yeah. that um, actuary, that auditor because of their relationship or their professional credential conferred upon them by the association. And that's where the real uh, value can be created. And it's great to see organizations starting to think more like that um, strategically and as I say, it takes a lot of courage for a CEO to be able to present a board paper to a board and say, well, we're going to spend this kind of money over the next two or three years to completely transform the way Australians or you know, the public particularly view our profession, not view the association. Mm. Do you think then it's easier for different industries then? So for example, your legal, your accounting, those industry bodies in the, to the public eye, they might be seen as a bigger brand and a better brand because of what they do? I'm not sure that it's about necessarily, um, it's not easier for them because of the, the brand. I think it's easier for them because most people will use mm. a professional in some of those industries yeah. in everyday life. Um, but it's no different than trying to find a, you know, a qualified mechanic mm. uh, or a qualified mechanic shop yeah. who's with the Motor Traders Association or whatever it is and say, I trust that they're going to do a better job mm. than someone who's just on the, you know, a corner store kind of guy. So I think that because there's a touch points with accountants, lawyers, um, the medical practices in, in the consumer's everyday life, mm. they had this opportunity to really discern between the credential and, and otherwise, and it takes a branding exercise to do that. I mean, look at the work that um, chartered accountants and CPAs mm. have done. Um, yeah. Master Builders Associations have actually done a really great yeah. job of it as well. Over a long period of time too. And that's, the that's the trick, right? It but, takes a long time to change perception. And there's almost that, I think there's almost that pivot point where, okay, the professional wants to tell their clients, their potential clients, I am a member of CPA yes. or I am a member of Master Builders Association. And to me, building that brand ambassadorship among your membership is incredibly powerful in terms of building that greater brand. Mm. You know, you're promoting, that person says, yeah, I am a CPA and I want to put it on my business card, put it on my website. I want to tell clients, potential clients, I am a CPA. Mm. And as you've, once you achieve that, then that, you know, that brand has enormous value. The challenge is that has to ha almost happen concurrently. Mm. Mm. So on the one hand, you, you know, Andrew, you've made the point previously about you know, we want to do something that's going to motivate our best sales force, if you like, is our own members who are going out there and, and marketing themselves and saying, I am this mm. versus that. The motivation for them to do that is to see that there's a return on that investment. And that's where the association comes in. The association has, has to have gone out there and created some public awareness or perception that there is a difference between unregistered and registered, mm. credentialed, not, not credentialed. credentialed. Mm. The challenge to a CEO in an association is that that's money that has to be spent concurrently and it takes a lot. Motivate mm. your internal membership to go out there and tell the community what, that they are a member at the same time. Uh, let the community know when you're making a choice, you have a choice, mm. an Optometry Australia registered practice or not. Yep. Those I sorts think of that's things. where Master Builders is just gone amazing Looks, as, yeah as soon as I see mm. that even though you know and especially as a female if I was to yeah. get something building wise done I would probably ask my boyfriend who's a carpenter but yeah. <laughs> if I didn't have that I would go out there and I'd be looking for something like that I want something you know if something yeah. does happen I know they're qualified and yeah it's just just more credible the opportunity mm. for associations in this space yeah. is that in a lot of cases there's regulatory requirements yeah. for that sure That's you know easy. and that so why not behave like there is a regulatory mm. requirement for people to do that? And I think that if an association that doesn't have that legislative backing um, could behave and say, well, you know what, let's, let's make like it, it is that. It, mm. it, that, is the, that is the standard that Australians or your community uh, in any country expect. Um, so we're going to uh, set it up like that. That's, that's the real challenge. Mm. Mm. Do you just sort of, I mean, taking that from another slightly different view. So if I'm a... I'm an association, I've got my members out there promoting the fact I'm part of the association. Do you risk diluting that brand a bit? Are you in a sense putting control of that brand, the strength of that brand in the hands of people who, you know, let's hope they are doing the right thing by the brand? If yeah. I get a bad experience with an accountant, do I, do I think, well, does that damage the perception of CPA? Oh, look, it can. I mean, yeah. We've experienced it in the industries ourselves mm -hmm. when people see yeah. how successful it can be yeah. and think, well, look at that, I'm going to do the same thing. And that was my thumbs down earlier, right? It's people who take 
take what associations do really, really well and say, you know what, I'm going to turn that into some sort of program that I can generate revenue out of. Mm. And that's not the point. The point mm. is we're trying to educate the public. We're trying to show that there are people in, 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 in a profession that are working very, very hard to keep up to date with the modern trends and mm. practices, to stay credentialed, to deliver great service. And associations are absolutely critical in modern society to delivering that sort of um, those services to the professionals, yeah. which ultimately everyone in the community benefits from. Yeah, when people sure. start detracting from that by putting up bogus credentialing programs and education mm. programs and that, absolutely there's a risk associated with that. And so the brand journey becomes even more critical that if the perception yeah, is that yeah. I'm going to go and hire an accountant, I need a chartered accountant or I need a CPA, that, only, that decision making only comes because of this broad brand awareness. However, that's a terribly expensive mm. exercise. Yeah, and a long, t and not a simple exercise, obviously, to yep. execute properly. But um, no, and full credit to the optometrists for uh, mm. the journey they're they're setting out on too. I think here in Australia we've experienced some really good examples of this, and we we, we probably need to do more now that we've got the show to start promoting some of that work because mm. it's really where the rubber meets the road for mine. Yep. is that the public are starting to see the 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 power of associations within society as helping them make really good consumer choices mm. yeah sounds good, good. Yeah. Um, mm. so if anyone does have no doubt I think we're going to get a lot of feedback on that topic okay. there um, even some examples of some associations that you think have done incredibly well in that area feel free to let us know um, and you can simply go to um, or subscribe we're encouraging people to subscribe yeah, to associations now magazine um, from ASAE and go to associationsnow.com um, otherwise you know the actual platform where we've got everything hosted um, feel free to click on the, the link where you're actually on now six degrees of a Association.com and you'll be redirected there. Get on the Twitter. Yes, yes. Hashtag six <laughs> DA. We're trying. The, the whole idea is to build a community um, and to get everyone involved, share feedback, not just within this twenty-two minute format, mm -hmm. but before and after, and get everyone sharing ideas. So Absolutely. please feel free to join please in the do. fun. And speaking of fun, we mm. now have. Andrew's segment. So there really is an association for everything. Let's find out more about this obscure association. Well, speaking of fun, and thank you for bringing yes. it up, Sarah. Rob, what say you and I get out to game, have a game of shinty this afternoon? And, a what? Uh, shinty, shinty. I said it. I did say. I don't know that if properly. that sounds too appealing. Please explain. <laughs> I did say that properly. Um, no, this week, fantastic. I present to you the English Shinty Association. It's not that easy to say if you say it quickly. Uh, we go to the Great Britain uh, where we find the sport of shinty and, as I say, the English Shinty Association, the ESA, as I like to call them. So it, shinty is a winter sport. Uh, think, think hockey uh, with a lot more tackling and a few more hits with a stick, uh, using a much smaller ball, a bit like a squash ball size sport. So shinty bears similarities to uh, hurling, which is an Irish sport, but it does predate that. So. A few years ago, three, three like-minded individuals, uh, all with a passion for Shinty, formed the English Shinty Association, uh, and full credit to them too. Uh, really built it up. There's now four Shinty clubs in the UK, and um, in 2004, there was actually an international Shinty match between the USA and England. England won. Good job. They won. Uh, two nil. So, as I say, there's, a, uh, there's now a ladies' shinty league in England uh, formed within those clubs. Um, and I really do look forward to the day when uh, shinty makes it to Australia. Um, you know, we've got the National Rugby League, the AFL, and the, uh, I think the Australian Shinty League has a nice ring to it as well. So, uh, but in the meantime, until we get to that stage, I do salute the ESA. Uh, good work and uh, very pleased to be able to honour your efforts on this segment. I feel like you'd go have a game of shinty and then have a schnitty at the pub afterwards and it would just be the best day ever. Shinty and schnitty. <laughs> That's brilliant, isn't it? There you go. We should write that. Well, you can use that. What size field is this played on? Is this hockey field sort of... Bit bigger. Bit okay. bigger. More, bit, think more AFL field, actually. So wow. Oval okay. field. A, a, right. You don't call it a goal in Shinty, you call oh, it a hail. I've been waiting to do this uh. for a long time. <laughs> oh, okay. So we're now at the two minute warning. I'm just going to put this down here. Yeah, good so idea. it doesn't fall. Because yes. <laughs> I know you guys tend to talk like this. Um, so this is the <laughs> two minute warning. Um, this is where we share feedback, anything that's come into us over the past two weeks. Um, Let's have a little bit of a discussion about some of the stuff that came through. Sure. Hmm. So, um, 
Keep Last time we actually, um, in your Obscura Association uh, section there, you actually talked about the Working Samoid Association, if everyone recalls that. So mm. just a bit of an update on what that, what that is. So uh, association for the, to maintain the pure breed and the, uh, competing, the competition for working Samoids. Get them to run across a little uh, obstacle course. Yep. Uh, beautiful dogs, Samoids, really good dogs. So very loyal, very loyal. Which okay, like. well, we've got recommendations that we should actually check mm. out. Wait for it. Yep. The Agility Dog Association of Australia. Okay. The if, AD, I, if I have yeah. a dog, I want it to be part of that association. That the ADAA. Like, that uh, sounds uh, like uh, the AIS for dogs, for <laughs> canines, really. Agility yeah. dogs. Well, if your dog's not agile, what's the point? No, I'll, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll thank you very much for that suggestion, mm. and I'll certainly look that up and look forward to featuring it, featuring the ADAA in a future segment of this show. Um, yeah. And fantastic feed to be getting that feedback too. Yeah, exactly. Any more, please keep them coming. Um, also, the set you may have noticed oh, we've yeah. had a bit of a redesign, mm. just mixing it up a bit look with our designers. <laughs> You should see our caravans. <laughs> That's right. Um, so, yeah, any more? And this is all feedback that we've taken on board. Um, we've been reading before these episodes begin as well. We've been incredibly busy as well. So, doesn't just happen. Feedback doesn't coming. just happen. Um, and, you know, we did speak um, a few weeks back about strategic planning, and a lot came up about strategic planning. Um, a few people out there had so many different opinions. Um, I know you both had your own opinions as well. Um, and there has been some talk about starting some more conversations on um, associationsuccess.org. Right. So associationsuccess.org is where you can actually go to form or to join this online community that we have going. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it might be good to even start a discussion around strategic planning because I think people really want to know what other associations are doing, how it's working for them. It's about sharing the knowledge as opposed to just keeping it all close to your chest. I like how it still um, polarises the discussion in yeah. And that's, I mean, that's a great place to do it. And yes, the uh, online community, Six Degrees of Association, online yeah. community, Association Success. We posted a link there uh, from the Forbes magazine, mm -hmm. the, the, the article that we shared, and it's, it's got some interesting points um, in the broader sector about you know, the views of strategic planning and the like. Um, yeah. So I think that uh, you know, we should argue about that a little bit more. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to argue that with you, Rob. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sure you are. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's a wrap. Um, thank you for joining another episode. Thank We're you. almost over 22 minutes, so let's get through this really, really quickly like we've got helium in. <laughs> um, please go and join our community. Please also share your feedback. Hashtag, hashtag sorry, 6DA. Um, and thank you again, Rob and Andrew, Thanks, for very, you for very thought-provoking. And thank to you, all of our 6DA followers, remember that too much agreement always kills a chat. Bye for now. <laughs>